Hi everyone, I am Rajesh Kumar. I am having close to 16 plus years of experience in DevOps, SRE and DevSecOps. I have worked with more than 12 software organizations around the globe. I would like to introduce you all a DevOps School's a flagship certification program in DevOps, SRE and DevSecOps. Uh, this program will get started in the weekends. Uh, so get involved. Uh, please contact us on the phone number given on the screen. And in fact, you can email us on, on the contact at the rate of DevOps School. Okay, so what is Kubernet? If someone asks you what is Kubernet, then you simply say, hey, we are running container. We love container. That is the first thing you say. We love containers. Why we love containers? I think uh, you know the answer. If not, you don't know, then get into the Docker sessions again and get this up. That's a prerequisite. We love containers. So we love containers. And when we love the containers in dev environment, it is superb actually. But, but, but when we love the containers in the broad environment, okay, then we need multiple more features, which is not there in Docker or any container engine. So in a dev environment, simply we say, docker run this is one machine remember that in the dev environment only one server is there I'm putting in a very simple way not complicating with the uh, slides uh, keywords and all because again you have a 20 hours of recording uh, for uh, kubernetes in lms so please check it out so in dev we have only one server and we simply say docker run xxx so how many containers will be created through the docker run tell me how many containers will be created all of you hello okay, one run will create one container one container simple but guys change your mindset today you are not in a dev environment anymore Look at this. You are running hundreds of servers. So this command will not, you are going not going to run this in hundreds of servers. It's a waste of time. Okay. You're not going to run this. So we are going to create these many containers. That is a problem actually. Look at this problem. Hello, is 10,000 containers. Yes. Oh. In the production, I am taking it up, talking about. So if I ask you to run one container, simply you'll go in laptop, Docker run up. But here in the production, you have hundreds of servers. And each servers, you have a 20, 30, 40 containers, all including thousands of containers you have to run. That is a problem. Docker can handle it? No. Have you seen any commands which I was talking about? You can create a thousands of containers, thousands of nodes, hundreds of nodes. No, Docker is not having capability. So there are so many problems actually. Everyone loves container. But, but when you bring the container technology uh, in, 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 in production, then the problem which will start like managing multiple hosts. Multiple host means? These are the servers, multiple servers, because you are running the multiple servers. That is a problem you are solving. You are uh, solving the. Uh, you are trying to, uh, you know, networking issues. How can you network issues? You will fix it. Okay. You are trying to, uh, you know, fix that storage issue. How can you that make a data? You can make the data persistence. You are trying to create a security issues also. I mean, security issues in the Kubernetes, how do you fix it? Okay. Uh, you are trying to load balancer. So many issues, load balancer. Okay, deployment, rollback. These are the things you need in the production, right? Rollback, monitoring. So how do you fix it? How do you fix it? The, for the running the container in a data center. So, so many challenges which we have. 
you will face okay and that docker cannot fix it so the question is who will fix it who will fix it and that is where the kubernetes is coming so kubernet is a what is a kubernet then kubernet is a container orchestration anyone can define the orchestration means anyone container orchestration is to manage multiple containers yeah managing large amount of containers mm. kubernetes is a micro services orchestrations also so those who are working in the micro services domain and architecture kubernetes is a perfect solution for you kubernetes can help you for storage orchestrations also Hello, so, sorry Raj. What about Docker Swarm? So Docker Swarm is a alternative of Kubernetes, but uh, you can say it's becoming obsolete day by day, and almost by now this year, is got got absolute. So Kubernetes has dominated the market in a such a way. There is no place for any other vendors actually. There is no 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 place for any other tools. Okay. Okay. So, uh, container orchestration, microservices orchestration, storage orchestration, networking orchestration, uh, lots of things it can do Kubernetes. Lots of that's the reason I said is a huge course, it's a vast course. Okay, so now guys, this is this tool is written in GoLang. So if you want to automate it, then you have to learn the GoLang. <clears throat> okay, so this is something which we have understood what is Kubernetes and simple way why do we need it. So second thing is Kubernetes architecture. Okay, Kubernetes architecture. So in the Kubernetes architecture, we have workstation and then we have master, master node. Or a control plane also we call it okay control plane and then workers worker. okay this is the architecture of uh, kubernetes that means how that that's how it may manage so workstation means your laptop and you send the command to the control plane request basically and request which you have uh, sent to the master from the worker okay so now these are the things which we have to do so now the question is what is there in the workstation so in the workstation there is one utility you have to install which is called kubectl okay kubectl now kubectl can connect to the master control plane okay so now the address has to be there. This IP address, certificates, and all has to be there. So QCGL refer one file in the user home uh, dot Q directory and config file. That means these two files has to be there. <clears throat> this file, how do we get it? I'll show you during the time. Okay. So this is the workstation. After that, what you have in the control plane, master also. So in the control plane, we have multiple applications. So these applications, when you install, it'll become a control plane. Okay, so what is that? So control plane, we have API server. We have a ETCD. We have a controller manager. Okay, we have scheduler. S-C-D-U-L-A-R, scheduler. Okay, so these are the applications which we have, and <clears throat> these are the application, but some utilities are also there. <clears throat> For example, QCTL, Cubadium, uh, Kubelet, which is important. <clears throat> Sorry, Kubelet, and one more thing, Docker. Now here. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> hmm. 
so docker guys one thing which we all need to remember if someone ask you kubernet latest version of kubernet which is from the 1.23 okay whether docker is supported or not then you will say no docker is not supported yes kubernetes has deprecated the docker supported default support for from 1.23 that means few months ago so then you'll ask rajesh what is that uh, then container technology so container d they are using it container d so docker uh, kubernetes has set the default container d from the 1.23 now it's 1.25 okay then you'll see rajesh i have learned docker is it waste no it's not waste you can use the docker same way <clears throat> in your development environment create an image and same image will be used by the kubernet but the runtime will be changed the container d the container d will be using the same image actually okay so here in this sessions here i will say container d understood all of you hello yeah okay <clears throat> so so these are the things so now you say rajesh okay fine these are the things which is installed in the control plane so what is this kubectl is doing so kubectl i think you should see that here helping you to connect to api server What is this kubeadm is doing <clears throat> managing cluster it's admin admin tool admin tool those who are kubernet admin they need this here so here if you do that kubeadm init if you run this kubeadm init it will create a it will set up all this component so this is the first time only one time you run it this one kubelet is a agent running in each for each node of the cluster now there is one keyword which is coming clustered again and again what is that so here if you see that master and worker together we call it a cluster so master and worker call it a cluster okay so these are the components which you needed these are the application you needed so to become a control plane how do we get this applications up and running simple guys <clears throat> one more thing for proxy yeah <clears throat> yeah good minute <clears throat> sorry so yeah so here apart from this okay these are the component of control plane now what is the component of worker so worker component of worker will be same but here you will run the join so when you run the join these three components will be created you oh, sorry the queue proxy will be created now what is a queue proxy so queue proxy is your networking the all the networking uh related uh, stuff which you need in the cluster it's been taken care of networking management you can say networking management there is a much more than that i'm not complicating each software these all are each software big big software actually. now this so this queue proxy should be here also okay so like that so these are the components there are few more components i'm not discussing everything these are the important thing <clears throat> control plane or dns is also there i am not discussing right now it's not important worker is there so if someone will ask you simple way hey how do we know how do we know that this node is a master node or this node is worker node so say simply we need to run this applications with the help of this utilities in the control plane and we need to run this applications with the help of this utilities for the work simple i yes i know that you have to remember that all the stuff one by one then you will have a question in your mind okay some one liner description i have given to here and here 
but what what about this one so let's understand this through image okay i'm not showing the slide but if you want to have a slides all the slides is available at this location if you would have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest thanks for watching